More than 70 years ago, one of the pilots for Bomber Command in Lincolnshire was a German Jewish refugee who had stolen his school friend's identity so he could join the RAF. Tonight, we reveal his secret that stayed hidden since the Second World War. We're about to uncover a remarkable story of determination and survival. It takes in London, Germany and Lincolnshire and I'm going to meet a man who wants to find out the truth about his father. Mark Stevens is a man on a mission. He's come all the way from Canada to London to find answers about his father, who was a bomber pilot in World War II. My father died when I was a relatively young man. Uh, I was 22 years old, and I never got the chance to ask him the important questions that a son asks a father man to man. Mark's father was an English RAF officer called Peter Stevens, who won the Military Cross. But after years of research, Mark has discovered his father wasn't English and he wasn't named Peter Stevens at all. Who I am, where I came from, comes from him. So I need to know where he came from in order to know where I come from. In fact, Mark's father's real name was Georg Hein, and he was born in Hanover in 1919 to a German-Jewish family. So how did he end up in the RAF using a false name? In 1934, after the Nazis came to power, Georg was sent by his family to safety in London. This is where he began his transition into the identity he later took as that of a purebred Englishman. He went to school at the Regent Street Polytechnic in central London, now part of the University of Westminster. We're meeting archivist Anna McNally, who's been checking the records of Georg's time here. We've got the school list for July 1935, mm -hmm. and in the lower 5D form, we have a GF There's Heine. my father. Yes. Georg was a keen athlete. As war approached, he wanted to join the fight. But after school, he'd got into trouble with the law, serving a short sentence for theft. And he was German. His homeland was the enemy. But now Georg saw an opportunity. Another student at his school, Peter Stevens, had died. Georg decided to start a new life by stealing his identity. It meant a fresh start, not as a German Jewish refugee, but as a UK citizen who could join the RAF. Here, in the upper 5B, we have a P.D. Stevens. Oh my. Yes, so I presume this is the Peter Stevens, whose name your father took. It must be. And a couple of pages previously, we have a report on the sewing for the school, and again here we have a mention of P.D. Stevens. Ah. And we've also found a mention in the magazines of your father doing sports throughout his time at the I school. I believe he was a sprinter. The day that... Nazi Germany invaded Poland, September 1st, 1939. Georg Franz Hein basically disappeared off the face of the earth. And Peter Stevens, his schoolmate in the mid-1930s here at the Polytechnic, uh, who had died, was resurrected on September 3rd, 1939, because he miraculously appeared at an RAF enlisting station, plunked down a copy of, of that person's birth certificate, said, my name is Peter Stevens and I want to be a pilot. Training went well for the eager RAF recruit. If discovered, he'd have been arrested as an enemy alien. But by 1941, he was ready to fight for his adopted country. So Mark's father now had a completely new identity and a highly dangerous role on the front line. He was a pilot and his new mission was to fly bombers out of this place, the busy RAF Hemswell, just north of Lincoln. In 1941, Hemswell was a bomber base. It was home to 144 Squadron, which flew Hampton bombers across the North Sea. This was the officer's mess. It looks a long way from the battlefront, but here, pilot officer Peter Stevens was settling into his new identity as he flew hazardous bombing missions over occupied Europe. This was where the officer pilots would congregate for their meals, for their drinks. Uh, this is where they would socialize. It's a very grand room. Do you, do you feel your father's presence here? 
eerie, it's in an eerie way I do, but I'm very glad to be here. He arrives here in April of 1941, and about three days later, he goes off on his first raid. Uh, um, but that month, the squadron loses about two or three aircraft. So he's a new pilot on an experienced squadron, but straight away, he's becoming aware of the missing places at breakfast, the guys who aren't there in the bar. This was life and death. Anywhere from five to 15% of these boys wouldn't come home the next morning. One has to question oneself. Were they considering the fact that they might be killed? Or were they, there were two other choices, I guess. Some of them probably believed they were already dead men. And so it didn't really matter. Or it would happen to the other guy, it wouldn't happen to me. By the autumn of 1941, 144 Squadron was flying increasingly dangerous missions, but the night of September the 7th was to prove to be the most hazardous yet, as Peter Stevens found to his cost. That particular night, uh, it was the biggest losses in a nighttime raid that Bomber Command had ever encountered up until that part of the war. That night, Mark's father's plane was hit over Germany. Two of the crew bailed out, but he tried to fly the damaged bomber home. Peter Stevens does not want to become a prisoner of war. His whole intention with a damaged aeroplane is to try and get as far away from Germany as possible. Finally, he crash landed in the Netherlands. He and his navigator, Alan Payne, were captured by the Germans. They're checking all the outhouses and the buildings um, and, and they find uh, Peter and Alan, and that's where their captivity starts. Now, Peter Stevens was a prisoner, but he'd got to conceal his real identity. If he was discovered as Georg Hein, a German-Jewish refugee, he'd face certain death. At the Bomber Command Research Centre in Lincoln, researcher Dan Ellin has gathered photos of the camps where Peter Stevens spent the next four years. So this is a photograph of Dulag Luft, which is where the prisoners of war were first sent right immediately after they were captured. For interrogation For purposes. For interrogation, yeah. Right. And the next picture shows just how, how conditions could be. Freezing cold with icicles hanging from the roof eaves. Mark has discovered his father made nine escape attempts. He was one of only 69 members of the RAF to be awarded the Military Cross. And that, from the paperwork that I've been able to discover, uh, relates pretty much to all of his escape activities. Just outside Lincoln, Mark wants to see the list of names on the Bomber Command Memorial. He's got one more piece of unfinished business. On his father's last mission, the rear gunner was 19-year-old Ivor Fraser. On Peter Stevens' orders, Fraser bailed out when the plane was hit but he didn't survive. His body has never been found. Here are the Frasers. There are lots of them, aren't there? Let's find the one you're looking for. It would be right there. Fraser IR. A 19-year-old boy who gave his life for freedom. What more can you say? And your father, would, 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 he, would he think that was good? After the war, Peter Stevens worked for MI6 in Germany, then emigrated to Canada where he raised a family, but he rarely spoke about his past. He died in 1979. Certainly there are still more questions than answers, and my greatest regret is that I never got the chance to talk with him about what he had done, to tell him how proud I am and to thank him for what he did.